Hey, what's up guys? Today the restoration process begins on this abandoned 1969 Ford Mustang that has spent the last 20 years sitting in a barn, collecting dust and getting pooped on. Now it was about two months ago that the owner first contacted me to ask if I'd be interested in getting his Mustang all cleaned up and after juggling schedules and old man winter, the time had come for the Mustang to finally see the light of day again after 20 years inside this barn. I'll show you around the car more in a minute, but for now it was time to get the car chained up and winched onto a trailer and then out to my studio. Once in the yard, we got the trailer backed up to the studio door, quickly unstrapped, and then just rolled it off. But of course, it wasn't quite lined up right, so a little maneuvering back and forth, and we had it nicely positioned over the drain pit. Now that we have it inside, I spent a few minutes chatting with Brendan about the car and about his plans for it, which I'll share with you in a few minutes, but shortly after, he was on his way, and it was time for me to take a closer look at what I'll be dealing with. As you guys can imagine, 20 years inside a barn is going to do a number on any vehicle, but this Mustang here looks like it took a beating over the last two decades. The paint is in horrendous shape from all the bird droppings, and it also looks like there was a four-legged animal or two walking on it at some point, so I'm already really curious to see how good I can get it looking today. But taking a look inside the car, and at first glance it looks to be in okay shape, but the rat poison on the floor tells a different story, so I'm sure I'll find a surprise or two later on when I rip out the interior. But until then, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and that you leave a like on this video if you're excited to see how the car turns out today. Okay guys, well after sitting in a barn for 20 years, I'm not taking any chances here, so I'm going ahead and using some of my all-purpose cleaner as a pre-soak before I hit the paint with the pressure washer. But for the eagle-eyed viewers out there, you might have noticed that the car lost a giant chunk of paint on the hood between when it was in the barn to when it got to my studio. So that means I also have to be really careful with the pressure washer as the paint is brittle and I don't want to blast any more of it off. Now by this point in pressure washing the car, it's still a little hard to tell what shape the paint is actually in because as you know, everything looks better when it's wet. So I'll have a better idea a little later on once I've washed and dried the car. starting on the hood where most of the bird droppings are and based on what I've seen so far, the APC is working pretty good as a pre-soak agent, so I didn't think I needed to step it up to the degreaser, but after seeing how stuck on the bird poop is, I probably could have stepped it up. Though barring that, it just means it'll take a little bit longer with the pressure washer to be sure I've got it all blasted off, while also being really careful to not take any more paint off the hood.
After seeing the hood earlier, I decided to bust out the degreaser for this vinyl top since it was covered in bird poop too, but if you're wondering why I'm doing the top of the car last, well that's simply because I wanted to preserve all the other shots for you guys, so if I wasn't making this video right now, I definitely would have started up here since top down is the smartest way to detail the exterior. Now using some of my wheel and tire cleaner, which you can of course find over on my website at detailgeekautocare.com, I'll get these absolutely filthy wheels cleaned up using a variety of brushes and a little bit of elbow grease. Now while this is typically a slightly less important step in a detail, when a vehicle has sat for 20 years, that means there's dirt everywhere. And I mean everywhere. So using my boar's hair detail brush, I'll use it around every crack and crevice around the car's exterior to make sure I've gotten every speck of caked on dirt off the car. Okay, now that I've got the Mustang washed and dried, I'm going to turn my attention to the engine bay where the 302 small block V8 resides. And as you can see, it's pretty dirty under here. So the first step before I get started with degreaser is to get the air filter covered up so I avoid any water getting down into the carb. And then like usual, I'll use a variety of brushes to get things cleaned up. Though I do want to stress that this is simply just a quick detail here to make things look presentable as I'd have to be dismantling things and cleaning them outside the car if perfectly clean was the goal. 55 years of grease and grime isn't going to come off with a 5 second scrub and since the engine hasn't run for so long and won't for a while yet, I'll just use the pressure washer for a quick rinse. Next up is to start work on the interior so while I've still got the pressure washer out and the floor is wet, I'll get the floor mat sprayed off but first I need to vacuum up all the rat poison here as I certainly don't want this sprinkled around the studio floor and once that's done I'll use my carpet cleaner and my drill brush to loosen up the decades worth of dirt and hopefully get this floor mat looking brand new again.
Alright, well after having recently done a 1967 Mustang, I know that the bolts for the seats have to be accessed from underneath the car instead of inside like modern vehicles, so thankfully the car has a bit of ground clearance and I've got enough room to squeeze underneath to get the four rubber plugs from each side removed and then get a half inch socket in there to get the seats unbolted. And yes, I had to be very careful to not drop anything here as I was working over top the drain pit and I certainly didn't feel like going fishing through mud to retrieve anything. Okay, with the seats out of the car now, I've got a little better idea of what I'm dealing with here, but like always, it's easier to clean things outside of the car, so I'll quickly get all the seat belts unbolted and removed, and then the door sill plates removed as well. Now once I had the back seat removed, I unfortunately found a giant mouse nest and piles of mouse turds, which isn't too surprising after seeing the rat poison earlier. Last step before vacuuming is to get the trunk cleaned out and thankfully this went a lot smoother than the last Mustang did as I had to crawl in through the car to unbolt the latch mechanism and found live mice while doing so. Now if you haven't seen that video yet, I highly recommend watching it as it was one of the craziest details that I've ever done. Alright, well while I use my shop vac to suck up all the mouse turds and whatever else is in here so it doesn't have to go through my central vac lines, I figured I'd give you the background I have on the car. So Brendan the owner has actually had the car since he was about 10 years old. I guess he was always a huge Mustang fanatic and found this one on Auto Trader, so his dad bought it for him. Only his older brother got to drive it first. Of course, once he turned 16, it was his car and he drove it for many years until it got parked out in the barn one day for good. And now that he's a little older and has the time, he wants to get it fully restored and already has a guy lined up to do the body work, so hopefully it won't be too long and he'll have this classic back on the road laying down some rubber. Of course, no detail like this would be complete without dead mice, so here's the rotted out bodies of three baby mice that their mother likely abandoned many, many years ago. But it wasn't just dead mice I found under the seat here, I also uncovered a crusty old watch, so I'll put that aside to give back to the owner just in case it means something to him.
Now because my central vac has more suction than my shop vac and there's still a bit of debris left in the carpet, I'm going over it again to try to get it as clean as I possibly can before I start extracting. Getting to work on the carpet now, which after vacuuming looks to be in pretty good shape. And while you'll usually hear me say that the carpet in older vehicles is always nice and plush and good quality, well that's not always the case as the carpet in this Mustang is nice and thick, yes, but it's kind of a weird material and not very soft. But that being said, I still think I'll have it looking close to brand new today. Starting on the last section of carpet now, and for those of you out there who enjoy seeing these old abandoned cars cleaned up to look new again, well I've done a few of them now and have even started a playlist so you can just binge them all at once if you like, so feel free to give that a look because they've all been pretty crazy detailed. Here's what the mighty sucked out of the Mustang today. Gross. Now as I continue cleaning around the car, it's looking like most of the interior is in excellent shape, which means the owner likely won't need to source many parts for the restoration, but even if he did, there's quite a few companies producing parts for these cars, or he could always try to source original as well. Ford made nearly 300,000 of these 69 Mustangs, so there might be a reasonable chance of finding OEM parts.
Okay, for this filthy back seat, I'll of course be using my leather cleaner and the steamer today, and even though this is a vinyl seat, my leather cleaner will still do a great job of getting it restored to look new again. Now that I've gotten the sill plates clean, I'll start on the seat belts, which I know I've seen tons of comments about over the years, wondering whether I clean these or not. And of course the answer is yes. Steam and my all-purpose cleaner will easily get the decades worth of dirt and grime loosened up so it can be wiped away. Alright, well it's time to turn my attention to the paint on this Mustang, so with some of my finishing polish and a microfiber cutting pad, I'll get to work polishing up this old and heavily oxidized paint, but I do want to caution you guys that this is simply being done in an effort to give the paint a little bit of shine again, and after taking a look at the results, I'd say it's going to look a heck of a lot better when I'm done. Okay, starting in the hood now, and you'll see pretty quick that this car desperately needs to be repainted, which the owner fully intends on doing once he's gotten all the rust and bodywork taken care of. So like I mentioned a minute ago, I'm only doing this to try to make the car look as good as possible for Brendan. You can see that the paint is in really, really rough shape here, and despite my best efforts, it's only going to look so good. But when you see the before and after on the hood here, I think you'll see that this just had to be done today. Another necessary step today is getting all the chrome polished up and for that I'm using my correcting compound as it's got a little bit more bite than the finishing polish and in about a minute the chrome is looking almost brand new again.
Okay guys, the second last step here is to dress the vinyl top here, and normally I'd highlight the UV protection that 303 offers, but in this case that ship has kind of sailed, though it's still going to revive it and make it look incredible. Well, there you have it guys, 13 hours of work went into the Mustang today to bring it back to life, but the work doesn't stop there as the owner is gonna have quite a bit ahead of him too to be able to get it back on the road. But man, if he does, it's gonna be a sweet little car to cruise around in. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed watching this transformation, make sure you smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one.